Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today, I wanna show you how you can speed up your Windows 10 PC. We're gonna start with things that you can do right now to improve your computer's performance. And at the very end, I also wanna walk through a few things to be aware of. So when you're in the market for your next PC, it'll be as fast as possible. All right, well, let's jump on the PC and let's start speeding things up. Tip number one, you wanna make sure that your Windows 10 PC is up to date. Microsoft is constantly working on performance enhancements and there are always new drivers coming out and these can impact your performance. To check for updates, let's go down to the taskbar and within the search field, type in update. At the very top, let's click on the best match option for check for updates. This opens up Windows Update, and at the very top, you can see whether you are currently up to date. Down below, you can also click on Check for Updates to see if there are any additional updates to install. If you see any updates or new drivers to install on your PC, I'd recommend going ahead and installing those. Tip number two, you can disable startup apps. You probably remember when you first bought your PC, it booted up a lot quicker than it does today. As you install more and more apps on your computer, unfortunately, it gets slower and slower. Much of this is due to apps that start up when you boot your computer. To see what all of these apps are, let's go down to the taskbar and within the search field, let's type in startup apps. Next, let's click on the best match option. This opens up a screen where we can see all of the different apps that start with our computer. Over on the left-hand side, you can see the name of the app. You can also see whether it's currently turned on or off. And over on the right-hand side, you can also see the impact that it has on the startup time. Now, before you go through this list and just say, hey, I'm gonna turn all of these off, keep in mind that some of them are good to have startup with your computer. For example, I use Microsoft OneDrive to back up all of my files. So I want OneDrive to start up with my computer. However, there might be some that maybe you don't really use and it has a big impact on the startup time. For example, I don't really use Cortana, but yet it's starting up with my computer. I can click on the toggle to turn this off. As I scroll down the list, here too I see that I have the Opera Browser Assistant. I don't really use that and it's currently turned on. I'll turn that off. And here too I see it has a high impact, so it's a good thing that I'm turning it off. Once I'm all done with my changes, I could simply close this window to have the changes take effect. Tip number three, uninstall apps that you're no longer using or maybe even apps that you never even used at all. When you leave these apps on your computer, they're taking up space and they could even be running in the background. To remove apps, once again, just like we've been doing this entire video, let's go down to the taskbar and within the search field, type in add or remove programs. Next, let's click on the best match. This opens up apps and features. And if we look down just a little bit on the list, you'll see all of the different apps that you have installed on your computer. Over on the right hand side, you can see how much space the app consumes and you can also see when you installed the app. As a little pro tip, if you wanna get the biggest bang for the buck, over here you can also sort this list. By default, it's sorted by name, but if we click on this, we can also change it to size. So here, if you wanna free up some hard drive space, you can find the biggest consumers of that space. To remove the app, you simply click on it and then you could go to uninstall. Now, one word of caution before you start going through and uninstalling many different apps. You might have some apps appear on this list that maybe you're not familiar with. Here, for example, you have Microsoft Visual C++. Keep in mind that many other apps will reference these different libraries. So just go through and delete things that you're aware of and you know that you absolutely no longer need. Tip number four, you can free up storage space very easily with Windows 10. If you're consuming a lot of your hard drive space, that can also start to slow down your computer. Just like we've been doing all along, let's go down to the taskbar and here let's type in storage settings and next let's click on the best match. This opens up storage settings and first I wanna show you how you can manually review how much hard drive space you're using and how you can manually clear some of that up. Right here, you can see your hard drive and it'll show you how much you're currently consuming. Now, right now I still have quite a bit of space, but especially if you're consuming a very high percentage, you'll likely see some performance degradation. If you're wondering, well, where's all that space actually going? Down below, you can see a breakdown of what's contributing to that usage. 
Here in my case, I can see that files stored on OneDrive make up a lot of my used space. I also have videos, apps, and pictures, and they make up the bulk of my usage. Let's say I want to know, well, within videos, what video files are actually taking up all that space. I can click on this, and then I can click into view videos, and I can see these specific files that are using up that space. I can then go through, and I can manually free up some of that space. As an alternative, maybe I want the computer to manage the space for me. If we shift our focus up to the top, Windows 10 has something called Storage Sense, and this can help you free up some space. Here, I'll turn it on, and next, let's click on Configure Storage Sense. Within Storage Sense, I can decide how often I want to have it run. Here, I can have it run on a regular cadence or only when I'm low on disk space. I can also tell it what I want it to do. I could have it go through and automatically remove temporary files. I could have it empty my recycle bin and also delete my downloads folder. Especially after time, it can really grow in size. Also down below, especially if you're using Microsoft OneDrive, you'll likely have the files on your computer and also in OneDrive. If there's a file on your computer that maybe you haven't used that often, instead of keeping it on your computer and in OneDrive, instead you could simply only place it in OneDrive and that'll help free up some space as well. Now, at least me personally, I like also keeping a copy on my computer as well as in OneDrive. It gives me a little bit of extra redundancy. Tip number five, you can turn on high performance mode or ultimate mode on your computer. Now, by default, your computer is set to balanced performance. It balances energy consumption with performance. However, if you just want the best possible performance, you can very easily enable that. Just like we've been doing all along, let's go down to the search field and let's type in power and sleep settings. Next, let's click on the best match. Within power and sleep settings, over on the right hand side, let's click on additional power settings. This opens up additional power settings, and here you could choose between balanced or high performance. Some machines will also have ultimate performance. Once again, for the best possible performance, choose the best option. Now, of course, the one downside is, is that it's going to use more energy. So especially if you're on a laptop with a battery, it's gonna drain your battery just a little bit faster. Tip number six, you can use a task manager on both your PC and in your browser to see what's consuming your system resources. To access it on the PC, let's go down to the taskbar, right click, and then go up to the option that says task manager. This opens up the simplified task manager, and here I can see all of the apps that I currently have open. Now let's say there is an app that I'm no longer using and I wanna close it, I can simply select that app, right click, and then I can end the task. If I wanna see additional details, like how many system resources any one of these apps is using, let's go down to the bottom left-hand corner and click on more details. This opens up the detailed view of the task manager, and wow, there's quite a bit more detail here compared to the previous screen. Over here, we can see all of the apps that are currently open, and we can see all of our different background processes that are running. Here, if I take an item, you can see how much CPU it's using, how much memory it's using, and you can see across all these other metrics. Now, especially if you're trying to track down why your computer is running slower, you can look at these top categories here, and if any of them are at or near 100%, that's likely your culprit. If you wanna identify what's contributing to that usage, you can click on the column header, and this will sort it from the most usage all the way down to the least usage. If you wanna close any of these apps, just like we could do in the simplified view, you can right click on it and then you could click on end task. Within the task manager, the next tab is performance and this will show you a visual of all of your system resources over time. You could also click into app history and you can see by app how much CPU time and network it's been consuming over a longer time period. And the last tab that we're going to touch on is startup. And this is similar to one of the earlier tips that we looked at where you can enable or disable apps that start up with your computer. Now it's all well and good that Windows has its own task manager, but we spend a lot of time in our browsers and browsers can really slow down our computer, especially if you have a lot of tabs open. Luckily, browsers these days also include a task manager. Here I have Chrome and I also have Microsoft Edge. You can simply right click on the header and then go down to the option that says task manager. This opens up the browser task manager and it looks pretty similar to what you get in Windows. Here you can see all of your different tabs and any add-ins that you might have. 
You can see the associated memory usage, the CPU usage, and also the network usage. Now let's say you have a tab that's really bogging down your computer. You can simply select that tab and then you can go down and end that process. Tip number seven, you can rely on the Windows security antivirus software. There's no need to run McAfee or Norton. Those are only going to consume additional resources, but it won't really provide you much additional protection. To access Windows security, let's go down to the taskbar and within the search field, type in Windows security and then click on the best match. This opens up Windows security and it provides virus and threat protection. You get a firewall. It basically does everything that some other antivirus software would do. Over here, we can click on virus and threat protection. You could scan your PC. You could also check for updates. So there's really no need to install additional software because this does a fantastic job. Tip number eight, you can disable background apps. If you remember earlier when we looked at the task manager, there were a ton of different background processes. Some of them are related to background apps. Once again, let's go down to the taskbar and within the search field, type in background apps and let's click on the best match. This opens up all of the different background apps on your computer. And right now I see a ton of different apps and they're currently all turned on. Now there is some benefit to allowing them to run in the background. For example, they'll be updated, they'll get the most recent information. So when you launch the app, it'll be up to date. But maybe on this list, there's an app that you really just don't use and you don't want it consuming those system resources. Here you could click on the toggle to turn it off. Tip number nine, you can also adjust the visual effects on Windows 10 to prioritize performance over the visuals. To adjust this, let's go down to the search field and then type in adjust the appearance and performance of Windows. Here, let's click on the best match. This opens up performance options and here you can see all of the different visuals that Windows uses. Now, maybe you'll decide that, well, I don't really need a fade or slide menu into view, so I can uncheck that box and that'll help me eke out a little bit more performance. Now, if you wanna take it to the extreme, you can also adjust for best performance and that unchecks all of the boxes. The one thing to be cautious of though, some of these visuals really do make it look like a better experience. For example, you probably want smooth edges of screen fonts. I'd recommend instead going with custom, go through the different options and identify which ones you want and which ones you're willing to give up. Once you're all done, click on apply. Another visual that you can change is the transparency in Windows. Within the search field down here, type in show transparency in Windows and then click on the best match. This opens up Windows settings, and here if I take the window and I move it, you notice that there's a slight bit of transparency here behind this menu. I can turn that off and that'll help me save a little bit more system resources. It doesn't look quite as nice, but once again, performance is a little bit better. Tip number 10, you can use hardware accelerated GPU scheduling instead of relying on Windows for that. To turn this on, let's go down to the search field and type in graphics settings. Let's click on the best match. This drops us in graphics settings and right now you can see hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is turned off by default. The eventual plan is to turn it on by default. Today, Windows schedules the GPU and that causes some latency. The plan is to have the GPU handle all of the scheduling and as a result of that, you'll see slightly better performance. Now, if you turn it on, this will help you get a little bit ahead of the curve. If you're interested in learning more about this, I've included a link in the description of this video. Tip number 11, if your PC is still going extremely slow and you really just feel like giving up, don't worry, you can also go back to the original state when you first got your PC. Down below in the search field, type in reset this PC and click on the best match. This opens up the recovery view and right up here, you can reset your PC. When you click on get started, you can decide to keep your files on your computer or you could simply remove everything and start from scratch. We've gotten through many tips for how to improve your computer's performance. If performance is still poor and you wanna make sure that your next PC is as fast as possible, there are two things I highly recommend getting. First, I recommend getting an SSD. This is a solid state drive. Your PC will be able to access data much faster than with a traditional spinning hard disk drive. Second, I recommend getting RAID 0. RAID 0 saves files on two separate hard drives. So instead of waiting on one hard drive to read a file, two hard drives can do it faster together. 
There are some redundancy concerns, but if you have a backup and you want the most speed possible, this is a great choice. All right, if you now see better performance from your computer, please give this video a thumbs up. To see more videos like this in the future, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, if you want to see me cover any other topics on this channel, leave a comment down below. All right, well, that's all I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed, and as always, I hope to see you next time. Bye.